Vous êtes Voldemort. How would you feel if Tom Riddle's middle name was Elvis? Or his first name Romeo? Yep, these are actual Harry Potter translations. International versions of The Wizarding World made some pretty big changes, but the US movie adaptations of the UK book series might be the worst offenders. Some of the changes between the movies and the books can be straight up confusing. For one, what about Sirius's last words? In the books, they were said to Bellatrix, not Harry. But the movie completely changed that for one last tearjerker moment. There's plenty more where that came from, so here are some of the most massive changes between different versions of Harry Potter. In the original book, we are told that six professors and the headmaster were tasked with setting up enchantments to protect the Sorcerer's Stone. In the US film, we only get to see five challenges completed. The Three-Headed Dog, Devil Snare, Enchanted Keys, Wizard's Chess, and the Mirror of Erised. What's missing, though, is a battle with Professor Quirrell's second troll, the first of which was defeated earlier in the bathrooms, and Professor Snape's Potion Riddle Challenge. The challenges were probably cut for time, plus we did get to see one troll fight, so why have two? But cutting the scene does ignore the fact that it was supposed to be seven, because seven is considered a magical number. Five challenges, though? Time efficient, but not quite so magical. Sirius's last scene will always haunt us, but it became very different once it was adapted for a US audience. On paper, Sirius's last words were actually spoken to Bellatrix as they fight. He tells her, Come on, you can do better than that. But in the movie, they needed a touching final moment between Harry and his godfather. Before he falls through the veil, Sirius turns to Harry and says, Nice one, James! Ouch. That one hurts. Not only does he see his best friend and his godson, but the two of them will never be able to develop a real relationship that goes beyond what Sirius had with James. Remember when Voldemort gets angry and destroys the force field surrounding Hogwarts after he senses that a horcrux has been destroyed? Yeah, that doesn't happen in the original books because Voldemort can't actually sense horcruxes being destroyed. And there also wasn't a physical force field he had to bust through, but it definitely looked cool in the movie. And we all know that Hollywood loves to add drama. These changes added a fun visual element to the film, and it was a way to explain how Voldemort knew what Harry was up to without going into time-consuming detail. In the original UK version of Half-Blood Prince, Harry and Dumbledore spend a lot of time observing memories through the pen sieve. The film cuts out most of these scenes, except for a little backstory with Snape and Tom Riddle. But one piece of information probably should have been included, just to ease our minds about a rumor that's been going around Hogwarts since the very first book. It turns out that the defense against the dark arts position at Hogwarts really was cursed, and it was all because of Tom Riddle. He wanted the position, and when Dumbledore turned him down, he cursed it so no one else could have it. This is why we can't have nice things, Tom. System Crookshanks is a special cat. Not that you would ever know from watching the movies. In the books, he knew all along that Scabbers was really Peter Pettigrew in animal form, and that Sirius Black was disguised as a dog. Crookshanks even helped get Sirius into the castle to try to capture Pettigrew, and Sirius used Crookshanks to go to the Owl office and take gold from his own Gringotts vault to buy Harry the Firebolt broomstick. The UK edition includes the vault number, 711, while the US edition mysteriously leaves it out. It seems like both the vault and Crookshanks will forever remain a mystery in the movies. Speaking of mysteries, the UK books gave us one about Neville that the US movies decided to switch up. In the book, it's mentioned that Neville dueled some snatchers who fell from the covered bridge. In the film adaptation, Neville rigged the entire covered bridge to blow up instead, leaving Neville without his mysterious duel. He sticks to taunting an army of snatchers who promptly chase after him once the shield around Hogwarts falls before they get caught up in the exploding bridge. Still a win, but we would have loved a visual of Neville's big fight. We get so used to seeing Death Eaters zip around with their trails of black smoke in the movies that it's easy to forget that in the books, they can't actually fly using their magic. In Deathly Hollows Part 1, they wanted to add some parallels with World War II, so Voldemort's lackeys can be seen zooming across London as if in their own little fighter jets. While it might not be exactly what J.K. Rowling intended from a Death Eater attack, we gotta admit, the Americanized version is pretty unsettling. Harry's first visit from Hagrid in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is on his birthday, July 31st. 
In the film, the two immediately make their way to Diagon Alley to buy school supplies before Hagrid takes Harry to King's Cross Station to bump into walls on his own while looking for platform nine and three quarters. In the original English book, however, Harry has to go back to the Dursleys for the rest of the summer. Uncle Vernon actually takes him to the station on September 1st, which is when the Hogwarts Express is really supposed to leave. Based solely on what we see in the film, Harry gets to Hogwarts a month early. We can understand cutting things for time, but maybe a quick flash forward would have been helpful here. In the Deathly Hallows book, Harry is under the invisibility cloak when Snape duels three professors and flees Hogwarts prior to the big battle. But part two of the US film didn't want to leave Harry in the shadows with things left unsaid. So instead, they added a scene where Harry confronts Snape in front of the whole school about how he's a traitor. It's some tense stuff, especially knowing what becomes of Snape just hours later. This was probably a good call, since it gives Snape and Harry some more interaction time that would have been hard to fit in a film. Harry's got some good instincts, but the American movies don't always take the time to show us that. In the UK version, Harry's first night at Hogwarts is terrorized by a dream where he's wearing Professor Quirrell's turban, which gets stuck on his head and tells him to transfer into Slytherin. He also watches Draco Malfoy morph into Professor Snape. This is the type of nightmare a Bogart would love. But in addition to being creepy, it's also what leads Harry to distrusting Quirrell, Draco, and Snape, so it probably would have added some good foreshadowing to the film. In The Half-Blood Prince, we get a touching tribute to Lily that seems perfect for the books, but was actually written exclusively for the US movie. When Harry finally gets the memory of Tom Riddle he's been after from Slughorn, he tells Harry that Lily created a fish for him from the petal of a lily. Just before it reached the bottom, it's transformed. He named him Francis. He kept the fish all those years until it disappeared one day, the same day Lily lost her life. It's a beautiful story and a chance for Harry to learn more about his mother. Plus, we see Slughorn's softer side, which is often overshadowed in the movies by his interest in powerful people. The house elves are a huge part of the UK Harry Potter, but somehow only two elves, Dobby and Crutcher, become key characters in the movies. The best house elf content actually starts in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, when Hermione starts the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare, or SPEW. All of her house elf advocating is removed from the movies, and so is one particular elf named Winky, whose dire circumstances inspired the whole organization. Another moment added to the US films is an intimate scene between Hermione and Harry. Once Ron runs off in Deathly Hallows Part 1, Harry and Hermione share a lonely dance to comfort each other in the face of whatever's coming next. This moment of bonding between the two friends wasn't in the books at all, but we can see why, because the moment is much more powerful seen than read. When the twins officially open up Weasley's Wizard Wheezies in Half-Blood Prince, no one questions how they paid for it all. The American movies never go on to explain a thing, but if you read the original books, you know that it was actually Harry that gave them 1,000 Galileans to start their business. He earned the money from winning the Triwizard Tournament, but after what happened to Cedric, he'd rather not be reminded. Instead, he helps out the twins, who are like brothers to him. Now for some of those weird international versions of the Harry Potter series, since the US movies weren't the only ones that made some big changes. In the French version, Voldemort's middle name is Elvis. It had to be changed so that his full name, Tom Elvis Jedusor, would become an anagram of Je suis Lord Voldemort, which means I am Lord Voldemort. The Danish edition went even further with the name change, and Voldemort's name ended up being translated to Romeo. Hmm, maybe he's better left known as he who shall not be named. In the Spanish edition, Neville's pet had a major makeover. Trevor is a turtle instead of a toad. Maybe turtles are just more popular in Spain, or maybe the translator read the name Trevor and thought, that's not a toad's name, that's definitely a name for a turtle. Either way, if we took all the different versions of Harry Potter and combined them, we'd be in for a very confusing story. What moments do you wish they hadn't changed for the movies? Are there any that you're happy got a makeover? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the things for more! Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time!